Uh, I'm going to tell you a bit about the rather envi enviable experience of having Danny as your supervisor. So I came to Imperial in 2009, um, tempted by the new Controlled Quantum Dynamics Doctoral Training Centre that was set up by Danny and Terry Rudolph and Martin Plenio. Um, this was a new type of scheme designed to provide four years of postgraduate funding. That was a, a year of uh, taught masters and a further three years of research as a PhD. Um, the format's now well established, um, and this, uh, the, the CDT has gone from strength to strength, and it's recruiting its eighth cohort this year. I was in the very first cohort, and I think it's fair to say that everyone involved uh, was very, quite excited, and there was a sort of pioneering spirit in the air. I found the experience incredibly exciting intellectually, and after four years of sitting through undergraduate le lectures and exams with hundreds of others, um, I was suddenly surrounded by a small group of excellent students being taught by world-class researchers um, about their favourite subjects. The sense of, kind of collaboration between the students and staff that first year in working out the new format, what worked, what didn't, um, only served to make it more exciting and kind of gave a whole, a much more relaxing and informal atmosphere to it. We all got to know Danny uh, rather quickly as he and Terry shared the role of cohort mentor that year. Uh, that meant, as well as teaching us several times a week, they spent many enjoyable lunches with us and took part in the outreach activities Nick's told you about. I got to know Danny rather better through the journal clubs that he organised as part of his course, where his rare talent in teaching came to the fore. He had a real skill in being able to help you work difficult things out while letting you feel like you'd worked them out yourself, and that imparted exactly the kind of confidence you needed to prepare for your PhD. Um, when it came to choosing my six-month project, it was the opportunity to work with Danny that decided it. Although I hadn't known him very long by the, at that point, I think I had him sussed, and I think I still that was correct, that he, had a, um, he was incredibly smart and passionate about what he did, but he was also really generous with his time, he was incredibly kind and patient, and above all, he prior, prioritised his students above everyone else. It was obvious from the start he'd be the ideal supervisor, and it was lucky, looking back, I turned out to enjoy trapping ions as well, because that was something of an afterthought. Um, I had very little experience in the lab before joining the group, and in my first months there, Danny would often spend time patiently talking me through the principles, and he taught me all sorts of tricks, such as how to couple light into an optical cavity, and how to align a laser, and how to clean optics properly. Um, it was a steep learning curve, but he was happy to spend the time it took to drag me up it. As I moved on to my PhD, the more experienced students and postdocs took more of a role in my education there, and it wasn't long before I learned rule number one, which turned out to be, never let your supervisor touch the experiment. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> however good they may be, and Danny was a fantastic experimentist, as you can see, um, the, the problem is it's not them who fix, have to fix it when it goes wrong. <laughs> so the problem was that Danny loved to stay hands-on. So we had to develop some strategies for keeping involved, him involved in the lab while minimising the potential for any messy accidents. <laughs> so the, the general technique was to put him in charge of something with limited potential for damage. <laughs> so here you can see Danny uh, at the controls operating a laser shutter, this, uh, this bit here. Now this is a, um, a entirely reversible and generally quite a safe bet. But you had to keep a very close eye on him because he had a tendency to drift over to other more interesting <laughs> dials, such as this, which offered the possibility of greater rewards in the experiment, <laughs> but at considerably greater risk. <laughs> Especially if he wasn't looking at what he was doing. <laughs> um, so my first two years in the lab involved quite a lot of building up of the experiment and testing the equipment, and the progress at times was quite slow. But Danny provided great encouragement to us all throughout, and he was always incredibly enthusiastic about where we were headed. So when the results eventually did start to come in, which was kind of 2012 onwards for us, um, it was made all the more rewarding for how thrilled he was with each bit of progress. And despite his plethora of other duties in the department, he managed to spend hours with us every week picking over the data. Um, by the same time Danny came to do his inaugural lecture, which was a good two years after he became professor, I should add. Um, he, uh, 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 we had a range of exciting new data and capabilities for him to show off. 
and drunk on our recent successes, he decided it would be appropriate for us to do some live ion trapping during the lecture, which I think Richard's into that as well. So the idea was that we would live stream a webcam image from the lab into the lecture alongside a video from the, the scientific camera that we used to detect the ions and, all, and then manipulate the trap parameters to change the shape of the crystals in the trap. Now, just to make things even more interesting, on the day of Danny's lecture, it coincided with a visit to Imperial by the South Korean president. Now, um, another one to turn down a good opportunity, Danny also suggested that we live stream the ions to her as she visited in the, universe, the main entrance of the college where he'd be waiting with other university bigwigs to show, show a range of demonstrations. Now, the president's visit was scheduled for the morning, but she was rather delayed. So we were kept hanging on in the basement lab, tweaking the lasers, trying to uh, be ready to do the kind of party trick at a moment's notice, while simultaneously trying to show various friends, old friends of Danny's around the lab who had come to visit for his inaugural. Um, when the president eventually arrived, several hours late, she walked straight past the demonstration stands, posed for one photo opportunity, and then left. <laughs> so we, took, we looked for some documentary evidence of this last night, and we found this, this picture of her posing for her photo opportunity where in the distance there, you can just see Danny <laughs> in his distinctive brown jacket, <laughs> waiting patiently for something that never happened. So um, you should bear in mind that until that morning, our record for keeping a stable string of ions like this, stable in a penny trap, was about 10 minutes. Um, although, uh, uh, but of course, this was all just a warm-up for the main act. And by the time Danny came to do his lecture, we'd had everything stable for about seven hours by the skin of our teeth. <laughs> Um, so it turned out, in fact, we were rather better at tracking individual strings of particles than I am at getting PowerPoints to work. So I had a couple of videos I wanted to show you, but I can't get them to play at the same time. So you can see a recording from the lecture at the same time, but I'll have to play this one afterwards. So here you go. And now you've got to bear with me on this one. <laughs> this is your horrible one. But we're now going live on the lab where Graham is there. Hello, Graham. Hello. Please say hello. at the same time, but this is roughly what we're doing. <laughs> oh, and it's still not playing. There we go. So we were squashing the ions and their configuration changes as we change the trapping potential. So soon after Danny's inaugural, um, I left the lab to write up my thesis and I returned last year as a postdoc in the group. Now, in this period, my relationship with Danny became more of a, a friend and a colleague. Um, but he never ceased to uh, surprise me of his wealth of talents and interests. Here, um, oh, and this was uh, him explaining the crystal. <laughs> um, so um, he was the physics professor who moonlighted as a blues man, an accomplished artist with an impeccable taste in late 80s cinema, uh, who was too terrified to step on a plane but thought nothing of tearing his high-powered motorbike up and down the A40. Um, I was the, one of the last of Danny's students, but there were many before me, uh, many of whom are here with us tonight. Um, I recently sent them all, all an email asking for memories of Danny, 
And the similarity of the responses was um, striking, but perhaps not surprising. Um, I think Owen Phillips, one of his old students, summed it up and spoke, uh, spoke for all of us when he wrote, oh, here's a list of the students, when Owen Phillips wrote, Danny was a fantastic friend, mentor, teacher, and a wonderful human being. He was inspirational in how he balanced the things most important to him in life. Family, research, teaching, music, and all with a three-hour commute each day. I don't remember ever, ever speaking ill of anyone. He showed everybody respect. His good humour was indomitable. Danny was, quite simply, one of the nicest people I've ever met. And I'm very grateful to have had him as my supervisor. Thank you. <laughs>